Alright, so row one, row two, and row three have been cut. Just kind of getting warmed up here this morning, and I've got three rows left. Made one pass on this one, haven't touched this one, and haven't really made a video out here in a minute. So what is growing on? Grass-fed fruit tree, kind of our uh, centropic-inspired agroforestry system here we've had on the farm since the beginning of the coronavirus kind of started. Um, I kind of called this a Corona garden when we first planted it and I really really love the system I wish I had more time to scale this to plant out you know 5 10 15 different models different species to see which one does the best but I can tell you that I love the system I can't wait till I can come up with some type of mechanicalized idea so we don't have to move all of this material by hand um, but everything in here is doing really good and the things that are the biggest are these nitrogen fixtures that are coming down today um, you've got avocados hanging on the avocados, loquats, cassava, um, mulberries back there have already been coppiced, but I actually ran into some avocados over there when I was cutting. Let's see if we can find any on this guy. But guys, this thing is pumping. I still really believe in this system. I still really think this can be scaled for large scale agriculture, especially with everything we have going on with droughts and everything right now. Um, you know, look at what's going on in Texas. I mean, it's it's kind of crazy um, you know a system like this using less water um, less inputs and actually growing your mulch I think could be the future still of large-scale tree ag um, and then obviously you can grow your annuals in between if you wanted to um, we're actually talking about once this gets fully successful over here maybe doing something with these rows but I really don't want to give up the material I love the material I love the mulch that's coming out of it I love that I haven't had to bring tree mulch back in here and if I do turn this into veg every other row or something like that we're gonna to have to bring in mulch to cover those rows so um, big avocado right here this one's doing really well flamengia is doing well got some little citrus over here these are the ones from that video I made up in Brooksville still hanging on some of these leaves look great some of them have some uh, interesting curl and leaf miner but just kind of letting them thrive on here oh there's those avocados Lots of avocados on this one coming on. Oh, let's see this. Avocados for days. So guys, this BCS, that sickle bar, is an absolute beast. Kind of blows me away what that thing will cut through. Um, I wish I utilized that machine as much as I should. It is a badass machine. I am super impressed with it. Um, we just tilled with it for the first time recently. I think I talked about that in another video. Um, that thing works awesome. The blade on this cuts really well. Now we just need something that pitches the grass to the side. So this way when we cut, we lay, but we've really let this grass get a little bit too tall this time. An ideal height to probably cut this would be somewhere in that range, you know, maybe knee high. This is like neck high. Um, I've had to double cut it a little bit, but there's no weeds in here. The ground is covered in shade. Um, you know, everything's still doing really well. It's just not ideal management. I should have done this a couple of weeks ago, made it easier to cut. You know, something that Nick mentioned to me was, can I just cut it with the scythe? And I'm like, yeah, if it was knee high. Not when it gets this high, it's a little bit harder. It takes a little bit more to go through. Even a pro like Jim would struggle with this. So just wanted to give you guys a quick update on the Centropic system. I think we're gonna coppice all these fruit trees today. Um, coppice all the nitrogen fixtures, should I say. So maybe I'll pick the video up one more time, show you what the finished product looks like, but we're giving the Centropic system a haircut today. So stay tuned. All right, so figured I'd give you guys a little in-between action. We just are getting done. Got two rows left of these NFTs, nitrogen fixing trees, interlobium lucana. I think I've told you guys a couple times before, but I definitely like the interlobium more. I do have some other nitrogen fixers in there. They've just been duds. Tree-wise, I have some mimosa trees. Can't seem to get those going off. Um, we've got flamengia, we've got pigeon pea, 
what else we got in there for nitrogen fixation I believe I have one other tree it's on the tip of my tongue I'm not remembering it right now but we've coppiced everything on this side cut all the grass got the PCS over here I got to get that grass out of the bottom of it but here's a little bit of that finished product grow your mulch really hard hit those nitrogen fixtures this time um, they're all we're just starting to flower set seed um, you want to cut them back before they flower ideally to get the most nitrogen release back into the soil but I also don't want that seed spreading all over the place I've had these in the ground for a couple years now I know I had tons of comments from people you're planting lucana you're planting interlobium you know those are invasive I know um, I have not seen these displaced an ecosystem in my area um, haven't seen any pop up anywhere else on the farm haven't seen any in the neighbor's yard so we're not spreading them because we're keeping them pruned but they could get out of control that's why you have to be careful with these trees so I'll do one more when we're done wrapped up here and uh, hold tight all right so i had some technical issues with the camera i had to come back two days after we finished the cut here and i figured i had to show you guys the finished product um it's a little brown right now all this material is just kind of dying back and we cut back all the nitrogen fixers laid them along the beds cut back all the grasses obviously and from the above shot the whole thing looks like it was a little bit scalped in a couple of days it'll be back to full green and i still have a couple of patches here that just aren't completely filled in with that mumbasa and what i've done is put a, a, a bunch of seed that I had left over in plugs and seed trays it's starting to come up and I think I'm just going to come back in and plug in the Mombasa in any of these thin spots where it's not coming up at all um, you can't really tell once the grass is all the way established but now when it's cut you could see where you know that we have we have more bare areas you know we kind of have clumps of the Mombasa but it hasn't filled in every spot um, not really spreading by seed out here for me so going to get a little bit more in but that's the chop we gave this thing a serious haircut. Um, I think it's looking pretty good. We're definitely gonna try another model with different species at the other location like I was talking about earlier in the video, using some more subtropical species like lychees and longans. Um, I gotta obviously get through a couple of cold nights, but if we can do that, I think we can grow them up here in 9B. Um, they had a really, really lousy lychee longan crop in South Florida this year. Prices were through the roof. I saw 12, 15 bucks a pound for lychees for longans. Things are getting outrageous and they said because you know just like a mango needs chill stimulation doesn't want chill hours exactly like a, a peach or a plum you know but it does want the stimulation for the flowers same thing with the lychee you know they can take into the upper 20s not a lot but you know for the most part they can they can take a little bit more chill than a mango so i think we're going to try a little bit of water protection or keeping this tree small and maybe even putting cold frames in the rows because the water's not guaranteed if I have that high wind night. But stay tuned. I hope you guys enjoyed this little update video, haircut, pruning, chop and drop. Um, I think the system's doing pretty well. I just think we could put some better species in here and get even some more production. I cut back all the moringas, did a little bit of tipping on the, uh, the mulberries. There's a piece of lucana that got forgotten about. And we just take these, uh, take these pieces of organic material and just kind of lay them along the bed as mulch. But it is pumping. So there's a little update. I'm gonna be doing some nursery installs at the new property here soon, and then we'll get some more of the plantings in. So fall is definitely gonna be quite exciting, guys. It's 2022. Get out there and pound some dirt, start a garden, start a food forest, do something, get in the dirt.